everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Squeaky Small Screen Reviews. It's your favorite mouse in the house, J Mice. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving and ready for more festivities along the way. In today's movie, I want to talk about a film involving a famous Chinese celebration, the Autumn Festival. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, how do you do? If you're new, hit the subscribe button down below and make sure to like, comment, and share. Share the love. Now, let's launch straight into this review of Over the Moon. Over the Moon is a new original animated film from Netflix. The story follows a young, intelligent girl named Fei Fei, who's been told stories about the moon goddess Shangge. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now, this moon goddess was once a human until she becomes immortal after popping some magic pills. Okay, sometimes in the myth it says pills, other times it says potion. This movie actually just says potion. You know, either way. She is taken away from her lover and is now stuck on the moon. But back to reality, Fei-Fei's life turns upside down after the passing of her mother. As years pass, her dad has now moved on, finding a new babe. Who also happens to have a son named Jin. Fei Fei, however, is having none of this mess and decides to keep her dad single by bringing proof that Shang Ge is real. And you can't discover magic without a little science. That's right, Fei Fei builds a rocket to the moon. Oh, <laughs> I mean, she'll build a rocket to the moon. Thank you, thank you. Along with their pet bunny, Bungie, uh oh, flashbacks, and Chin, they all survive the laws of physics and make it to Lunaria, ruled by their queen, Shang who's now a pop star diva. Now is a race against time as Fei Fei must give her the gift that could help be the key component for her own hidden plan. Now, what are the Gudas in Over the Moon? Well, to start things off, the animation is pretty great. Of course, having the great Glen Keane, who of course is the head honcho of the entire film, definitely did a great job of having it visually appealing. One of his examples of using his 2D animation style is the beginning of the film, where we see Fei Fei's mom using a scarf to tell the story of Chang Ge. You can definitely tell from the animation as well as the drawing of the characters that that was his style. That was pretty cool to see. As Glenn King actually stated in an interview, he wanted to give it somewhat of a Wizard of Oz effect. While having uh, Fei Fei's home looking more natural looking, having Lumara have this glowing effect. Something really out of this world. And it works! Lumara looks absolutely fun and amazing. With all the colors, all the designs of the characters and people in Lumaria. It's very creative. Another thing I like about this film too is, well, the culture. You can tell from watching this film that they did an extensive amount of research into Chinese mythology as well as traditions. 
even the most small things, like for instance, Fei Fei's hair getting cut, which in old Chinese tradition is a big no-no. It's even been said too that Glen King was actually invited to people's houses to study more into how the homes looked and how everything is set up. So if you are into Chinese culture or from China yourself, you may see some of the similar things in this film. Another thing too that I actually really like too is my favorite part, the food. Food is actually very important in Chinese tradition as since it's meant to represent as gifts. And one of the most important things in the autumn festival. And speaking of food, one of the top things that were shown in this film was the mooncakes. Mmm. Now these mooncakes are made, sold, and eaten around the time of the Autumn Fall Festival. And of course, they're connected to the mythology of the moon goddess. And these mooncakes are so prominent, they're actually characters in Lumaria. Now, for the story, I actually really enjoyed it. It had definitely a good moral to it. Definitely about having to move forward in life. Even after a certain tragedy that happens in your life. The moral to me was pretty strong. It was, wasn't as complex, pretty straightforward, but it was a good moral. Another fad I need to give out uh, before I get to the next segment is the writer of this movie, who is Audrey Wells. Audrey Wells has made a lot of good films in the past, including A Dog's Purpose, The Hate You Give, Modern Love, Guinevere, and of course, the best movie of all, George of the Jungle. She became the writer for Over the Moon, and Over the Moon is her last film that she wrote for before her uh, decease. That's right, she passed away in 2018. And if you look at the credits, they honor her and her tribute. Good work, Audrey. Very good work. Now, are there ACMs in this film? Hmm. Well, kind of. You see, if there is one of my favorite parts in this film, and this is going to be kind of surprising after everything I said, I'll just say that the more compelling part has to be on Earth. Now, don't get me wrong, Every Little Mario was very bright and colorful and fun and, like I said, just over overall creative. However, though, I felt more of that heartfelt connection in, well, just the meat and potatoes back on Earth. From scenes of Fei Fei growing up with her mom getting sick, to her father meeting another woman, her being introduced to Shin. To me, I felt like those were the more heart-wrenching parts. I guess it's kind of similar to how I felt with a movie like Coco, where I really did enjoy the other world parts of the film. But I think the big difference is that they really nailed in the, I guess, the aspect of family to me, and it was able to really become a really integral part in terms of the characters in that film. And this one, on the other hand, I just felt like the all the heart, all that comes from on Earth. I know it sounds a little odd to say. Well, I guess a big example of this in terms of 
uh, the CMs is the relation between uh, Fei Fei and Chin. Now, of course, in the beginning of the film, when they first meet each other, they don't really see eye to eye. Fei Fei only sees Chin as a, well, a dingbat. And wants nothing to do with him. I would say overall, this movie is just enthralled with lore and mythology from Chinese history. This also includes something I didn't know about, is the dog that ate part of the moon. And the two lion guards that help fly uh, Fei Fei and Chen around. But of course, the most prominent one, who is also the one of the main characters in this film, is Chang'e, the moon goddess. I thought it was a pretty fun idea to turn this very traditional and elegant uh, figure into this, well, I guess, K-pop artist. Now, speaking of music real quick, the music in here is popping. I mean, it legit feels like a Disney film. Which, of course, makes sense since you have one of the Disney animators being the director of this film. Fly away. I'm gonna go and fly away. They need a remix for this. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I was hoping to have Fei Fei and Chin be like the Woody and Buzz or uh, Russell and Carl of this movie. Now like I said, it's not to say you don't, you don't get any kind of heart or the emotional feel throughout the film. Heck, there's even a scene where the characters are facing a really downward spiral in close to the climax of the movie. And I do feel that. I guess because I just wanted to see more of these two really develop a bond and really go on this adventure together to really develop that sibling relationship. No offense to the Gobi, the, the green um, uh, alien. Wait, is that a Pelagon? Well, that thing. No offense to him. And he has some good moments. But I felt like he was more of a slapstick sidekick character, like the typical one. To me, I would rather have uh, Fei Fei uh, spend more time with Chin. But that's just my opinion. But overall, though, there's a lot of good things in this film. I kind of hate that I caught it uh, to such a late time after the Autumn Festival. But hey, maybe next time it'd be a good movie to check out. So for this one, I'm definitely giving a pause up. And if you haven't seen it, you can still check it on Netflix. Well, that's all I have for today. I'll catch you beautiful folks for the next videos. But if you haven't so, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Now, make sure to stay happy, stay healthy, and stay squeaky. Bang. He ran into a wall.